Hi, this is Larry Kerwin. Um, John Berger of Valley Entertainment asked me to put together some kind of a spiel that you could download and listen to uh, about Celtic Invasion. So I'm going to try and go through this in one go. So if the doorbell rings or if one of my many creditors shows up or the dog bites me, uh, I'm just going to keep going. So hang in there. I'll probably take a drink as I'm going along, so bear with me on that too. Celtic Invasion came about because John Berger and I met in a bar. What else is new? <laughs> uh, we got talking, as people in the music business do sometimes, about what's going on. And uh, things are pretty bad out there right now, especially for bands, uh, for live bands, and for bands who are recording. Everybody's downloading the music, and one of the great things that used to be about CDs was that CDs could finance tours for bands, and uh, just by the sales of CDs, by having them with you on the road, you could finance a tour. That's pretty much going and almost gone at this point. So... What we're trying to do here is come up with an idea that will help bands to get along and to uh, prolong their life on the road and also help them to make a few bucks. So the idea we came up with is how about if we put together 12 bands with 12 great songs and uh, he asked me if I could come up with that and I went home and I came up with about 100 bands with about a hundred really good songs and uh, we went through that and pared it down a bit and this will be the first edition if this is successful we'll, we'll make a lot more of these probably make one for soft music this is fairly up-tempo stuff um, music you would hear at Irish festivals and music you would hear uh, on Celtic Crush my Sirius XM show so I used a couple of um, ways of finding the bands. Partly it was from the Black 47 uh, work of just being out there and hearing really good bands. And the rest was from the uh, just getting in so many CDs from people desperate for play on Celtic Crush. I always have to go to these CDs uh, like a maniac because finding great songs is not easy. And on Celtic Crush, the songs have to be great because Sirius, has, Sirius XM has about 150 stations. So you play one dud song. doesn't matter if it's a new song or an old song. You play one dud and the person's gone off to listen to Howard Stern or listen to the reggae show or whatever, and quite rightly so. So I just pride myself on the fact that every song that goes on Celtic Crush is a future classic or is a classic. Uh, so that's where the, the 12 songs came from. And I'm just going to go through them uh, one at a time, give you just a little bit of an insight. And this is all off the top of my head, so uh, bear with me. Barley Juice uh, have the first song on Weekend Irish. And I got that, I got a, a CD in the mail from Kiff Brewer, who's an old friend of mine. Uh, we played with Barley Juice Black 47 many times. And it was the Barley Juice Irish Collection. And it had a lot of uh, standards, as you would call them, trad Irish songs. Normally, I don't go for those at all because how many times can you listen to uh, The Fields of Ath and Rye over and over? So if I see a lot of trad songs on there, I'm inclined not to spend too much time with it. But I knew Kiff, and I knew he had this rock and roll sensibility, and I played it. And sure enough, I hit pay dirt straight away with his song, Weekend Irish. Because it has that uh, flavor of the stones in their heyday, added into a real good sense of uh, humor, which Kiff has, about the whole Irish scene, and how people are... Um, you know, Weekend Irish, it's what it says it is. But it has a great combination of Irish and rock, and that's why I choose Kiff's song and why we put it number one on the album. 
Run rig are number two with Clash of the Ash. And I go way, way back with Run rig. Um, Run rig have been going, I don't know, since maybe since the early 70s. So they've been going around 40 years at this point. And I first heard of them a long, long time ago. My father worked on the oil rigs outside Aberdeen, out in the North Sea. And it was a rough old job out there. My father didn't like rock music. He didn't care for the fact that I was playing it and that I might end up <laughs> in a rock band. So uh, <laughs> God help my poor father, he's long gone. But one time he came home from, um, from the oil rigs and he had a big album with him. And it was by a band called Run Rig, and he threw it to me. He said, here, listen to this. I don't normally like this shit. <laughs> he probably said something harder than that about it. But all the young Highland guys play this band, Run Rig, and I thought, you know, maybe you'd like it. And I remember playing it at the time and thinking, these guys are actually singing an Irish on it, uh, except it was Scotch Gaelic that were singing. And... I'd forgotten about Run Rig for many, many years until I came across one of their CDs, and uh, I think it was 50 great songs of Run Rig. And believe me, these guys have so many good songs. In fact, I say on the album itself that, uh, that they're the they're the, the greatest band you've never heard of, and I would recommend you go back into their catalog. This song, though, I picked it, uh, Clash of the Ash, because it's about shinty. It's about uh, Scottish, a form of Scottish hurling, and it just says so much about the band and about their populist roots, and that's one of the great things about pretty much all the bands on this album. They're populists. There's no fourth wall between them and their audiences. We break down that. That's one of the things we all try to do in Celtic rock or whatever you want to call it. 